Okay, gonna try to make this one quick. Um, I'm working on a uh, Pride DX300, not mine, not for sale. And by the way, uh, most people don't want to pay um, the kind of money that um, um, I'll be asking for good equipment. They want a bargain basement, and it's no bargain basement here anyway. But anyway, this is not for sale. It belongs to somebody else. Um, just working on it for them. And one of the things that this one had that I'm showing today is it had uh, the ham bands in it, 10 through 80 meters. And um, I'm taking that out and I'm showing one of the reasons why. Um, basically, I, I said all along for most amps, you need about four uh, turns of coil, give or take, and depending on sides and uh, uh, the play current versus voltage and all kind of other stuff is involved. But in general, give or take for a uh, 10 meter and 11 meter amp you need about uh, 10 turns of no I'm sorry four turns of coil and also by the way if an amp will work on 10 meters it'll work on 11 meters if it doesn't have any uh, special 11 meter circuits that are tuned to eliminate 11 meters um, like a SB221 has but anyway um, for 10 meters or 11 meters this is the four turns that are originally in this amp that it uses for 10 meters when you're on the 10 meter tap or the 10 meter band switch but on this one I took all that out and here is part or the wafer that actually does the switching that was originally uh, in this amp that originally comes with the Pride DX300 um, this is part of the um, multi-wafer switch and this is the part that actually switches the coils you know back and forth um, actually how it works is um, the coil taps come in here this one on the left would be 10 meters 15 20 40 um, and then it uh, that would be 80 where it disconnects all of them so here is the rest of the coil that we're taking out and for 15 meters it would switch to this one it would bypass the 10 and you would go be going to that one to the switch then for 20 meters you would go to that point there you know it's cut out but you can see where there was a um, was a connection that would have been 40 meters and then 80 meters was connected directly all the time and I'm going to see if I can put the camera down and do this. Doo -doo -doo -doo. See if I can turn it by hand. So on 10 meters it's connected here. And it's going out to where the 80, uh, 80 meter connection is. So that's kind of end on the left and out on the right here. And you can see this um, old coil is all carboned up and dirty. It's not even burnt, but this is typical for, you know, a 40, 50 year old amp. Even after, you know, 5, 10 years, um, they start looking like this. And this is one of the reasons that I do not like band switches. Um, this one, you know, I handle 500 watts or so. You know, a bigger amp, they have a bigger switch. But um, the switches is always a weak point for these amps. For one, it's mechanical. Anything that moves, you know, and when you turn the switch, it's a moving uh, anything mechanical is usually going to be a weak point, uh, you know, when you have power going through it, such as a switch or a relay. But anyway, um, we turned it there to 15 meters, and it opened up to 10 meter. So that would be open, and it would go to that next tap, 15 meters there. And if we can turn it again, I know this is bad camera work. 20 meters, 40 meters, and then over there to 80 meters. So your power, after it goes through the tank coil, you know, your tune and your load, um, well actually that's not correct. This is part of the, um, the coil itself, so it's not totally through it, it's, you know, during the middle of it. 
But anyway, your power is going through this switch. You know, it's going in one, one end and out the other. So it's going through all these little connections and, you know, making these uh, a point here for 10 meters and, and out there. And, you know, that thing gets dirty or, or arcs or, you know, bad connection or these fingers get loose. Um, you're going to have problems. You're going you're to have intermittent power. You're going to have, you know, high SWR. You're going to blow the amp, you know, eventually because of this switch. And, you know, the only way around it is, you know, replace this, clean the switch. But then, you know, it's still a, you know, 40, 50 year old switch. And these fingers and the metal fatigue and all that are still, you know, 50 years old. Replace it. Or if you're only going to use a, uh, uh, single band such as uh, 10 11 meters single band you could just bypass the switch um, which um, I think is a good idea if you're not going to use that stuff anyway so this one's been bypassed switch has been taken out the rest of the switch the coils removed and the wiring for the switch is just wired in directly and also Sorry about the camera work again. Um, since all of this is hooked up and it's going through the switch and that coil is kind of, you know, bypassed in one way, but it's still connected. It's still part of the circuit, even though it's, it's you know, kind of shorted out, but it's still connected. Um, it kind of interferes with your RF coming out. So basically, the general thought is, in general, a single band amp like we have this amp now I do about five percent more than the same amp that has the mono band in it with all the switches and all this because you know just having it go through the switches and just having this wired up to it even though it's you know not completely part of the circuit you lose a little bit of power and basically uh, the rule of thumb is for any um, multi-band amp you know 10 to 40 meters you take all that stuff out, you wire it in directly and make it into a single band. Um, normally, you gain about 5% of power, you know, give or take. Uh, that's the general rule. And I know some people say they don't like mods. I'm like, well, there's good mods and there are bad mods. And to me, um, getting rid of or bypassing um, a problem child circuit like this that's not needed anyway. You know, to me, it makes it a better, more sturdy amp, and it actually does a little bit more, and it's a little bit cleaner because it's not going through these switches and the extra wires, and you don't have this hooked up in, in line and in the way and interfering either. So anyway, I know some people are going to disagree with that, but um, for me, that's a fact. That's it for this one. Bye.